through the rigs we've been using today to explain to you how they're made up and what their benefits are. On this rod I've got the sunken float pattern ostra. I'll get it and run through it with you. The first part of the rig coming down from the line is of course the stop knob. On here I've got a cigar shaped uh, float. The idea of the float is to hold the bait out up in the water. Here we've got it set up roughly as it would actually appear within the water itself. The float is holding the bait up and as you can see the bait is off the bottom of the, of the lake or reservoir. That's very important because the pike often patrol along and look up and therefore they will, they will attack up and this will pro often promote them to attack where a, a bait left on the bottom itself would not. The first thing connected between the line and the rig itself is, is the swivel. And swivel is a very important part of, uh, part of any terminal tackle. Please try to make sure you use good swivels and, and ones uh, preferably of a propriety brand. The next thing I've got is an uptrace. This uptrace is about two foot long. It's very important because even with a dead bait, fish, uh, an attacking pike will often take the fish like this and come up. And as you can see, if its mouth is open like my hand is now, it can, it can snare this piece of line. If it is line, it will break it or snap through it. Next piece, a very innovative piece of tackle, is this John Roberts Paternoster Boom. That allows the, the, the pike to take the fish through, it, free running, but on the other hand, it, it allows the bait itself to stay up in the water under tension from the float. Next is a fairly short trace. I prefer to use traces between 8 and 10 inches long uh, for this particular part here because again what I'm trying to do is firstly make sure the trace itself is substantially less in length than the up trace and secondly that the bait is held fairly close to the paternoster rig itself and finally from this part of the paternoster boom is, is the line down to the lead. Now I use line between four and six pound breaking strain you can use slightly heavier but no way should it be anywhere near the breaking strain of your wire or your line because if it is, this, if, if the fish subsequently snags that, what could happen is, as you're playing the fish, that becomes snagged and you, the, you will lose the fish itself. Or even worse, you lose the tackle and leave a tethered fish. Anyway, that's briefly the sunken float pattern oster. Now John's going to take us through the ledger rig. John. Right. Mine's over here. This is what we're using at the moment. Um, this is a popped up trout dead bait. I popped this up with a, a poly ball. Oh, it's just a piece of policy. No, it's an actual packing policy. I've also got, I've also got a little, uh, little cum on there. In trout fishing terms, uh, in trout fishing circles, they put little things like that on just to give the trout a little bit of an um, incentive if, if they haven't got their mind made up properly. Um, this is uh, the 18-inch trace as I described earlier. Uh, attached to the silk cast line as you see. Uh, just about a little interest there, I leave the end of the knot long like that uh, so that if I want to change I can uh, clip swan shots onto there SSGs, um, that's the other term for them and clip this lead off and that will then give me a very light um, critically balanced popped up bait and also if I want to freeline a bait I've got something to actually tighten my, my line down, my indicator down onto rather than moving the bait. Um, as you can see here to prevent tangles and to prevent the, the lead from chafing the line I've got a, one, of my, one of my own products here which is called the feeder boom. That's stopped by one of my soft ledger stops.